I myself feel that it's not we adults who are most in need of paying attention to attention in this way. I think it's children because childhood has changed. Childhood has changed as a side effect of this onslaught of the digital world into our personal universe. Uh, I was talking to an eighth grade teacher who was complaining about how kids now are texting in the States. I don't know about here. Texting has overcome phone calls among teenagers as a preferred way to connect. Their kids will send 100 texts a day to their friends. And that's, that's not unusual. She said, you know, for 20 years, I've been teaching the same book to my 13-year-olds. It's Edith Hamilton's Mythology. And she said, in the last two, three, four years, my students are starting to say they're having trouble reading this. It's a little too hard. And she attributes it to a loss of uh, ability to comprehend because of this constant distraction. I saw a kid, maybe nine or 10 years old, riding a bicycle and texting while he was riding. Can you believe that? Luckily, it was in the country, not a country. The reason I'm worried about children is that the brain is the last organ of the body to become anatomically mature. It starts growing from birth, and it actually doesn't finish until the mid-20s. During that time, the principle of neuroplasticity is extremely important. Neuroplasticity says that repeated experiences shape the brain. Use it or lose it is another way of saying it. If a child has an experience, for example, of empathy, and another experience of empathy, the circuitry for empathy grows. If a child has an experience of paying full attention, and ignoring distractors, which is what we just did, the connectivity for that circuitry grows. And children need this in order for their brain to develop well. When you see a child grow... All right. I've been telling people this for years. Not in the exact same words, but in so much of saying that childhood is extremely important to having a normal person. If the child doesn't get all the training that it needs, all the information, then the person you end up with is going to be messed up. And now here you have this guy validating exactly what I was saying. Same thing that the Bible says, train a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it because it's instilled within them, you know, the normal development of a human. But some people don't get that normal training, you know, taught how to develop these things like paying attention. And when you don't get taught that stuff, it has a toll. It weighs a toll on you. Like now these kids not being able to understand that book the teacher was talking about because they're not doing what normal children used to do. You know what I'm saying? Their body is not getting what it needs to develop normally. And we need to pay attention to this. If you're wondering why something's wrong with your child, it's probably because they missed a lot of stuff. Or maybe it's yourself that you're wondering what's going on with. Either way, let's continue. And go through different phases of childhood. What we're seeing are the external signs of childhood. And I think it's, it's incumbent on us to help children shape their brains in the best way. I was in a classroom of seven-year-olds in Spanish Harlem in Manhattan. Spanish Harlem is an area in poverty that is the children there live in, in housing projects uh, and the projects are pretty dire. One child came to class, the teacher told me, and a little shaken, and he'd just seen somebody shot. And the teacher said, How many how many of you have seen, know someone who's been shot? Every hand went up. It's that kind of childhood. It's very complex. And I happened to be there. Uh, to watch something called Grieving Buddies. Every day, this classroom, all the kids 
have a section where they go to their little cubbies and they get a favorite stuffed animal and they lie on the ground on the rug on the floor. They put the animal on their belly and they watch it go up if it moves up. And they come and they do they try one, two, three. People may not be aware of the law of contradiction, but they spot an inconsistent story. They become aware of contradiction. Now, little by little, we toss it up. People may just do do things oppositely, not notice it. That's why the average man would be puzzled if you ask him, why aren't you making complex withdrawal simulations? And if you have to explain it, you'd be putting down the top people that stood behind the proposition all men are created equal. No man is by nature the ruler of another man. The way that men must be the rulers of dogs and horses. Men expect dogs and horses to make it leap without contact, tend to their consent to the point on which they are deductible. But no man is by nature the ruler of other men, the way that men are, must be by nature the ruler of animals. So much of this we find is accessible to ordinary people, even though they don't have the language for the concepts of philosophy and truth. It's the ordinary person that understands that it's not only harmful to take an alcoholic drink, that the language is contingent on circumstance, time, excess, or moderation. The same person would not say genocide, take it in moderation, because he's just cognitively intelligent. Yeah. Uh, it, he, he doesn't have the language of talking about things that are merely contingent to right or wrong, or things that are kind of off to the side. Things that can never be wrong, never be right under any circumstance. But we have the sense of things whose wrongness will not be effaced by medicine to its extreme. We can give two or three of these maxims that everybody would know, and the surprising thing is how they just pervade for so much of our law. These are things that trace back to matters that ordinary people have simply taken for granted in going on with the ordinary business of life as lived. Nothing esoteric. This is why Jefferson in that famous letter could say, if you give the same moral problem to a ploughman and a professor, and the ploughman is asked, ask him it twice, because he will not be distracted by artificial rules called empirics. 